everyone this is dr garima sachdeva and today i'll be discussing about the guideline and the recommendations on the management of hemophilia in pregnancy and the guideline that i'll be referring to will be on, on, about the management of inherited bleeding disorders in pregnancy that is gtg 71 inherited bleeding disorders the last guideline so the disorders which are commonly there are many disorders that they have given but Uh, mostly you get questions from hemophilia or von willebrand disease so these are the ones which i've covered okay, okay. so hemophilia about hemophilia what do you know what kind of inheritance it is x linked yes it is x linked it is x linked recessive the inheritance is x linked recessive and uh, hem- there is hemophilia a and hemophilia b hemophilia a is if there is deficiency of factor 8 hemophilia b is deficiency of factor 9 okay oh. since it's x linked recessive so usually uh, the females are the carrier and it is a male who carries the disease okay yeah okay so up to 50% of neonatal males with severe hemophilia have no previous family history because females are the carriers okay in these cases there is a 90% chance that the mother is a carrier with uh, with risk to the next male child also and if there is hemophilia a then you have to see factor 8 is to von willebrand ratio if that ratio is less than 0.7 test of carriership but the ratio more than 7 does not exclude it yeah, yeah. can you please repeat it once about the inheritance about since it's x linked recessive so if the mother is a carrier okay right so if it's a uh, male baby what, what is the chance of the uh, of developing a male baby it is 50% right yeah for any pregnancy chances of male is 50% chances of female is 50% right okay if mother is the carrier father is normal okay then then the male child will receive x chromosome from the mother and y chromosome from the father right yeah yeah okay one pair from the mother and only that's why it will be male no y from the father so one of the x is normal and one of the x is having the defective gene okay so and uh, so in that case um, the chance of having an uh, if it's a male child then chance of having an affected male will be 50% understood because one will be having a normal x gene from the mother one will be having a defective gene from the mother and because they do not have another normal x gene to mask that defective x gene they have a y rather right so they will express the disease yeah okay is it clear yeah okay so see mother will have if mother is a carrier okay mother will have x dash is the defective gene x is the normal gene okay father will have xy right so now what are the chances of the baby okay baby can be baby can be uh, baby can receive xx and xx okay then it can be x x y right or it can be x y or it can be um x x right it can be x x it can be x y yeah x x x y okay mm. okay so uh, in this these are the male babies right and the other two white one are the female babies okay so female will only be the carrier okay because yeah. only one defective gene in case of male this male will be normal so there are 50% chance okay so two on two chance uh, there are 50% chance that the male will be affected because if the male is having only one defective gene x it doesn't have a normal x to uh, balance it so okay. this male will be okay. having the okay. male so this okay. male will be affected so with okay. okay in a male child there is a chance of 50% being affected 
yes overall there is 25% ch- chance of a baby being affected but if they ask you they will never ask you like this in case of x linked disorders ki what percent of the child they ask what percent of the male child will be affected so it will be 50% right there are two okay understood 50% yes ma'am okay then uh, okay so in these cases there is 90% chance this i've told you then about the inheritance x hemophilia is uh, x linked uh, recessive von willi brand disease it can be a uh, multifactorial autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive so it has variable inheritance okay then there is okay. another factor 11 deficiency not very common so it can be again autosomal okay. dominant autosomal recessive okay then uh, okay. coming over to severity of hemophilia it depends on how much concentration of the factor do you have so if it's mi- uh, mild then you have 0.06 to 0.4 international units so this is mild deficiency if it is less than uh, 0.05 0.01 to 0.05 it is moderate and if it is the factor level is less than 0.01 it is severe deficiency okay then how do you manage pre pregnancy management you have to do the baseline level because you have to classify whether it is mild moderate severe then you have to know the status of the partner also because if the partner is affected then accordingly there be inheritance right yeah yeah so you have to do the genetic testing and the partner testing then about the and this is about the pre pregnancy management then antenatal management so if there is severe hemophilia if the patient has severe hemophilia then you have to do a pre implantation genetic uh, diagnosis one you should why because you have to uh, check out the se- uh, sex of the baby if the mother is uh, having severe hemophilia then there are chances that 50% of the male baby will be affected so you can offer for sex selection also for the baby you can offer genetic uh, this thing you can cvs you can offer cvs or amniocentesis to find out whether the baby has hemophilia or not okay so this can be offered then how do you manage so in management you should remember like you have to keep the factor level well uh, at least 0.5 okay but if the factor level goes less than 0.5 you have to treat the patient how do you treat you give the factor okay if there is fact basically these are clotting factors if they are deficient what will happen there will be risk of bleeding okay Mm-hmm. and with okay. factor 8 it is also so, can- ma'am hmm? sex selection is that um, sex selection is then prior to conception i mean uh, when it is done it can be done what do we do it can be done in x linked recessive disorder it is uh, allowed by the government for this for x linked disorder uh, okay. recessive disorders because we have there are risk that the baby can be affected no so in these disorders it it is allowed so we terminate the pregnancy yeah okay 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 ma'am so this was okay. about the genetic part then about the actual management if the patient has severe hemophilia that that is the factor concentration is less than 0.01 okay so basically if the patient has hemophilia you, your target should be to maintain the factor level always factor level should be more than 0.5 okay okay whenever it goes less than that you have to correct because there be risk of bleeding in these patients okay you have to avoid bleeding okay you you correct if it's a factor 8 deficiency you have to remember you give desmopressin and in and in both okay. cases to in order to prevent the bleeding whenever there is high risk of bleeding you give tranexamic acid okay so you give the factor you give uh, if it yeah give this more person hmm you give for uh, uh pilia a you give desmopressin and uh, you uh, if required you give the recombinant factors okay okay 
and uh, till like till uh, what time do you replace till the level becomes more than one okay till the factor level becomes more than one okay so you test it here give it then for both the factors sorry pranamic acid we are giving for both the factors in general in general yes because this to you in any form of hemophilia wherever there is risk of bleeding you give tranexamic acid okay in order to avoid bleeding in uh, the, the targeted management will be replacing the factor so one if it's hemophilia a hemophilia a where there is factor 8 deficiency factor 8 is also a carrier for von willebrand disease uh okay von willebrand factor so you if you 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 give uh, one uh, you give this von willebrand factor in the form of desmopressin okay because it also carry it is uh, Des desmopressin is uh, basically it acts to raise the levels of uh, factor 8 so this you can give or you can give recombinant factor okay so this is this option you have in factor 8 deficiency only and in uh, desmopressin it has an anti diuretic effect it causes fluid retention so when you are giving desmopressin you have to give strict instruction that total uh, fluid uh, uh, like uh, intake should be restricted to only 1 liter in 24 hours again this is a question okay okay and for factor 9 it will uh, cause hmm will it cause volume overload yes because it has anti diuretic effect okay 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 and uh, when giving treatment to raise the clot clotting factor levels it is important to monitor response to treatment by measuring the pl uh, plasma clot a clotting factor concentration before and after infusion and 4 to 6 hours following treatment to facilitate the dosing okay understood so can you tell me like if the fact uh, when what what will be the uh, like uh, when will you treat this patient of hemophilia what should be the target level to initiate treatment 0.5 they should mean when it is uh... Less than point five, yes. And what will we give if it's a uh, if it's a factor A def hemophilia A? What will you give? How will you treat? Yeah, we give desmopressin. Yes, and what uh, desmopressin? What are the other options that you can give? Other option is recombinant factor A. And uh, and also not... and also what else do you give? In general, tranexamic acid. Tranexamic acid, yes. Until when do you replace? Like, what should be your target? At the factor level reaches when? Uh, after that, you will stop. One five. No, uh, one. So you go beyond point five. Oh. Okay. So treatment. If that you are giving the treatment, you should continue it till it reaches one. Okay. okay. So we are starting when it goes less than point five. or mm -hmm. when it comes to point 5 we are starting mm -hmm. i mean we are giving and uh, it should our target is one mm -hmm. yes yes and desmopressin okay. what specific instruction will you give the patient like what and uh, there should so uh, yeah there should be fluid retention i mean uh, restricted to 1 liter per day in, yes 1 liter in as it yeah so this was about then about intrapartum management if it's a male baby because there are the chances of the baby being affected it should be a uh, mdt team should be involved then you will avoid all this where like there can be bleeding in the baby okay so ecv should be avoided when two is delivery uh, mid cavity forceps fetal blood sampling fetal scalp electrode monitoring all this should be avoided and this if okay. the state baby status is not known then you plan cesarean section you do not go for normal delivery you plan a cesarean section at 39 weeks if it's a male and the status of the baby is not known and factor 8 and 9 levels of more than 0.5 are required for insertion or removal of epidural catheter and for spinal so 0.5 is something which you should remember that should be your target to maintain okay and why for cesarean work which is male because uh, like in normal delivery there can be head trauma and all that no if the baby gets stuck 
because you cannot okay. do all these thing no you cannot put forceps you cannot do uh, ventus delivery so you yeah, do a safe side of okay. yeah for postnatal management active management of third stage of labor should be done to avoid bleeding factor 8 and 9 level should be maintained above 0.5 for at least 3 days fo- following an uncomplicated vaginal delivery or 5 days following an instrumental delivery or cesarean section tranexamic acid should be continued in the post mortem uh, in the postpartum period until the lochia is minimal pharmacological thrombo profile in this cases you are not giving thrombo profile access because anyways they are at a high risk of bleeding and if you give thrombo profile access again low molecular weight heparin can cause more bleeding so you do not give thrombo profile access okay rather you give mechanical stockings or uh, uh, mechanical methods you use basically should be avoided where the factor level is less than 0.6 okay then this was about the postnatal management then about the management of the baby so you have to do uh, because you have to diagnose whether the male baby is affected or not then you have to do a cord bl- blood sampling and diagnostic testing to see whether the baby is affected or not some mild cases may require retesting at 3 to 6 months of age in a no uh, in a neonate with low factor levels then vitamin k should be given and uh, in order to rule out bleeding cranial ultrasound should be done if it's a severe or moderate failure and if required if the baby has signs then you have to do a cranial mri as well okay signs of uh, okay intracranial hemorrhage okay 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 okay, okay then you have to do a cranial mri also then about oh, no. intrapartum postnatal and neonatal management of hemophilia during pregnancy so hope you found it useful thank you so much